What's up guys, Rob the Awesome here, and today we're going to be looking at the bounty of beautiful medic primaries that the game has to offer, and deciding which is the best, and which is the worst. Let's go! Before I start, there are certain things you should know before watching. For one, these guides focus primarily on competitive. Not Valve's competitive mode, but actual competitive. Pubs and or glorified pubs are just too random to get any clear outcomes, while competitive has a set meta for overall testing and results. You should also note that we don't just focus purely on the stats, we also focus on the psychological portion of the weapon as well, and how it affects both the user of the weapon and the victims against it. So keep that in mind while watching. Oh, and one more thing. If a weapon isn't listed in this video, then the only reason for that is because it is a reskin of another weapon. End of story. Alright, we good? Here we go. Like always, let's start with the stock syringe gun. This weapon, as spammy as it is, packs a huge amount of damage in every clip. Just one needle does a minimum of 5 damage from longer distances and a maximum of 12 damage at closer ranges. With a maximum of 40 needles in your clip, you can get a maximum potential damage between 200 to 480 damage, and that's just with one clip. As nice as that sounds though, using syringe guns isn't at all a walk in the park. The needles themselves travel in an arc, slowly descending to the ground the longer it's airborne. That being said, the needles aren't a hit scan, but rather a mini projectile that travels until it hits your enemy's hitbox. However, with 190 total syringes in your pockets, there are tons of chances to perform high amounts of damage in seconds without having to make every needle count. Syringe guns help the medic escape when there is no one left to heal. The enemies run right at you and therefore right into a mass infestation of needles that will eventually tear them to shreds. With enough training, syringe guns can be deadly both offensively and defensively, potentially even more so than any minigun will ever be. But for now, we're just gonna put this weapon right in the middle and go from there. An interesting addition to the primary arsenal is the Crusader's Crossbow. This medieval monster fires one syringe per clip and reloads after every shot. Instead of having 150 additional bolts to fire, the crossbow reduces the overall supplied ammo count by 75%, turning 150 extra syringes into 38 in store for future use. Even though you don't have a sweet supply of syringes to stack up the damage, the bolt you fire has special properties that both help teammates and hurt enemies all in one. The syringe in question does more damage the further it travels, dealing around 45 damage from insanely close distances and a maximum of 75 at maximum range. You can be in the comfort of your own team's surroundings and still do huge damage from all the way in the back lines. And for those moments where enemies get close, doing a quick 45 damage with a quick melee hit can still dish out a good 110 damage very easily. Although it seems risky, this is a non-stop process. The crossbow has a passive reload, meaning it will reload whether you have it out or not. You can continuously apply the Crusader melee technique in succession with movement and jumps to deal damage over and over again, until they either retreat or die at your feet. Sounds great, right? Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. As well as doing stacked damage to your enemies, near or far, firing a needle at one of your teammates actually heals them for a huge amount, ranging from a minimum of 75 from super close distances to a maximum of 150 health at maximum range. Remember the sweet passive reload ability I was telling you guys about? Well, if you apply that knowledge of the primary with your metagun, you can give out huge amounts of healing in small increments of time. In the heat of the moment, simple metagun healing won't cut it, but adding in a huge boost of health in between healing can keep some of the most important classes on the front lines and kill off the most important targets without retreat. There is nothing bad about this weapon. This gives the medic so many more opportunities to help his team with more of his arsenal and without any consequences to boot. I mean, there is a no headshot negative stat to this weapon, but it never headshot anyway, so who cares? Because of its incredible use to team play and awesome quick switch damage dealing strategies, this weapon goes above the stock syringe gun. The Crusaders is too good to pass up, and it's recommended that every medic wields this weapon if they want to get the most out of the class's full potential. Next on the list that everyone seems to love is the Bloodsauger. This gun takes away two thirds of your self healing powers in exchange for syringes that heal three health back per hit. Sounds simple enough, right? Every syringe you hit gives you health back. It's gotta be good. 
wrong and let me explain why for those of you guys that never understood the whole minus two health drain per second stat on the weapon and don't find yourself losing health whatsoever the medic has a thing called self-regeneration which eventually turns into critical healing essentially the medic starts off by getting three health back a second after directly being hit over time the three health a second turns into a maximum of six health a second after 10 seconds of not being hit basically your self-regeneration powers increase when you stay away from danger and don't get hit the process does, however, reset itself after a slight hit from anything, which can be a pain when you need health fast. Essentially, the Blood Sauger takes two health away from that potential healing, starting off with one health per second and over a span of 10 seconds, turns into four health back per second. Yeesh. But what about that sick three health back per syringe? Doesn't that make up for the lack of regeneration power you get? I'm afraid not. Even though you have 40 needles in your clip and can potentially get 120 health back, most people don't even hit 25% of their clip, let alone half of their clip to begin with. You might get maybe 30 health back if you're just starting out. You could definitely improve those odds with practice and experience, but even so, in competitive, the amount of times you pull out a syringe gun are very little. Maybe there's the odd chance your team doesn't coordinate and you need the health to pull off that sickest escape in history. But in reality, the extra health on hit mechanic just doesn't work in that sort of environment. The medic needs survivability without removing the ability to constantly heal with his metagun. The negative effect this weapon provides is a negative for the entire team, whereas the positive effects are selfish and unneeded for team play. In short, the negatives far outweigh the positives. That's not to say this gun isn't bad in pubs where you can get away with anything and go all combat medic on your opponents, but in a more coordinated environment where a med pick is devastating for the entire team, it just isn't up to snuff. Because of that, this weapon goes below the stock syringe gun. I'd rather keep the amazing regeneration powers that keep me alive than risk it for a very, very situational weapon perk that any medic will barely use. Lastly, we have a weapon that was recently changed and seems to have people scratching their heads in confusion, the Overdose. This syringe gun flat out gives you a damage penalty in exchange for more speed when the weapon is out, depending on your uber percentage. The first thing people say when they look at this weapon is, what the heck? This weapon on paper feels useless and unneeded. If you remove this weapon from the game, nothing would be different because it seems that useless. However, when you take a closer look at it, it's actually not that bad. When you look at the damage penalty, 15% damage taken away seems like a whole lot. But in reality, it's absolutely nothing. The max amount of damage you can do per needle with a stock syringe gun is 12. So what is 15% of 12? 1.8. Now the way numbers work in this game is that it rounds down for penalties. You can have 1.99999, it will still be one. So essentially you lose one damage per needle. Is that it? Really? That is actually not that bad. And it honestly doesn't come back to bite you in the butt. So what we actually have left is this extra speed you get when you hold the weapon out, depending on your uber percentage. For every 10% uber charge you get with the metagun, 2% extra movement speed is added to your character. But remember, you need to be holding the weapon out in order to get the benefits of the gun. A lot of people feel like this needs to be a pass above. However, 20% extra speed at full uber charge is crazy fast for a permanent thing. The whole purpose of a syringe gun is to back up, have the syringes land on people trying to follow you, and escape. Acquiring extra speed to escape is more useful than it seems. 20% extra movement speed is insane. People think the power jack with its 15% is really fast and useful for pyro. Well, imagine a 20% gun version of the power jack with medic speed on top of that. Yeah, that's pretty fast. This seems extremely useful in certain situations, especially when you only lose one damage per needle. This is essentially a stock syringe gun with added perks that are more useful than a selfish healing on hit buff for yourself. Because the positives are helpful and the negative doesn't really exist, this weapon goes above the stock syringe gun. A lot of people don't appreciate the new changes made as of recently, but I feel that it was a good choice to making an underused weapon far more useful in the long run. And those are the best and worst medic primary weapons. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you want to see more of these types of informational videos, leave a like and subscribe. Also, hit that little bell thingy next to the subscribe button. Even if you're already a subscriber, hitting the bell button enables notifications for future videos and live streams that you don't want to miss. 
Yeah, it's a weird thing on YouTube's part, but if you're a sub or not, I'd appreciate it if you hit up that bell if you like what you see and hear. Remember to be awesome, stay awesome, and to have an awesome day. I'm Rob the Awesome, and I'll see you guys later. Ciao for now. Motherfucker, I'm awesome. No, you're not, dude. Don't lie. I'm awesome. I'm driving around in my mom's ride. I'm awesome. A quarter of my life gone by, and I met all my friends online. Motherfucker, I'm awesome. I will run away from a brawl. I'm awesome. There's no voicemail, nobody call. I'm awesome. I can't afford to buy eight balls, and I talk to myself on my Facebook wall. You know my